In this video, we will discuss a type of diodes called light emitting diodes. Light emitting, emitting diodes, in short also called LEDs, have become extremely popular these days because they produce light at a lot of efficiency. Uh, most of the electrical energy supplied to them is converted into the useful light uh, instead of you know, heat being produced with uh, all kinds of lamps uh, or bulbs. Uh, so LEDs, first of all, they don't look like your regular diodes that we have discussed. They typically have two leads. So, you know, for this red LED over here, you can see that there is a leg that's a lead or a leg, you know, which is longer uh, compared to the other one that's kind of shorter. This is the other one which is longer, this is the shorter one. And the longer leg is basically the positive side or the anode and the shorter side is called negative. In the schematics, we draw an LED in the following way. So you still draw your LED and now you also show the photons coming out. So that indicates that it's actually a special type of diode that also emits light. So the basic question that we have is how to basically hook up an LED in a circuit, okay? Now we know that diodes conduct current only when a minimum threshold voltage called forward voltage is applied. So first of all, we need to know what the forward voltage for an LED would be. So I'm going to show you uh, an example LED that I have picked at uh, SparkFun. So you can see over here we have a basic red LED and uh, this is only 35 cents and there are all kinds of other LEDs. There has yellow LED, there is a green LED and clearly all these LEDs differ on the basis of uh, what is the wavelength of the light that they are emitting when threshold voltage is applied. So let's see uh, the documents, right? We want to look at this data sheet to see what the forward voltage is. So if you come down over here, we can see that the forward current is 20, mil 20 milliamp over here, which is very, you know, kind of very small. It's not a whole lot. Uh, and we want to make sure that, that the current flowing through this LED will not be more than 20 milliamp. So this is an important rating over here, the forward current being 20 milliamp. Okay, so keep that in mind. Uh, peak forward current is 30 milliamp, so that's the maximum it can take. Uh, let's not worry about the reverse voltage, which is, you know, 10, uh, uh, 10 volt, 5, at 5 volt, this is uh, 10, right? And that's in micro ampere. Um, let's see what else. So power distribution, let's not worry about that. Let's come down and look at the forward voltage. Okay, so the forward voltage over here is minimum 1.8 volt and, and maximum is 2.2. Typical is not given. So let's say, you know, just hypothetically speaking, it's 2 volt. Okay, so minimum voltage to turn this LED on in the forward direction would be 1.8 and maximum you can supply 2.2 volt and typical is not given. We'll assume this is 2 volt. So, uh, wavelength of the, the light emitted from this LED is 620 nanometers. So we know that the, the spectrum is 400 nanometers to 600 nanometer, and this is within the visible range, right? So if you look at the electromagnetic spectrum, the visible range of the uh, radiation is between 400 to 600 nanometer. 600 nanometer is close to red and 400 nanometer is close to blue color. So this was, you know, 400 nanometer, we would expect it, the light coming out to be, you know, like blue color light. Uh, okay, so the most important thing to remember from this table is what the forward voltage is, that's number one, and what the forward current is, okay? All right, so let's write that down. We'll say I sub F is 20 milliamp, that's the forward current, and the voltage in the forward direction is two volt, okay? That's the typical voltage. Those are the two numbers that we need to work into our calculation. So let's say I have a nine volt battery, okay? The kind of battery that you have in your kit too, and you take an LED and you hook it up with this nine volt battery, okay? And we know this is an LED because it's emitting the light. Too. Now, if you do this, uh, first of all, will the LED turn on? Of course it will because this is nine volt up being applied in the forward direction. This is plus, this is minus, and this is plus, this is minus, so it matches. Um, so clearly the LED is going to turn on. Of course, it's much more than the typical two volt voltage. So what's going to happen in this case is that the LED will turn on, but within 30 to 60 seconds, you'll find that your LED will basically die. And the reason it will die is because there's a very large amount of current flowing through the circuit. There's nothing that is preventing the current to be limited. On the other hand, you, you can see from the data sheet that this particular LED can tolerate no more than about 20 milliamp, maybe 30 milliamp, but no more than that, right? So we need to be somewhere in the ballpark of that current to make sure that our LED continues to glow at its you know, rated uh, specification. 
Okay, so how do we how do we limit the current? The easiest way to limit the current would be to introduce a register, right? So let's introduce a register in the circuit. So we'll introduce a register in the circuit. And we don't know what the resistance value of this register is, but we can find that. Okay, so we know that the voltage drop across the, the LED is typically 2 volt for this particular kind of LED, right? So we know that 2 volt is being dropped across this LED, which means that if you have a 9 volt source, then we would expect that the 7 volt would be dropped across the register because these two elements, register and the LED, are in series, so voltage drop across both of them should add up to the voltage drop across the battery. So let's say this is point A, this is point B, this is point C, then VB minus VC is equal to the forward voltage, which is 2 volt, and that means that VA minus VB, you know, plus VB minus VC, which is equal to VA minus VC, and that's nothing but the voltage of the battery is 9. So we know that VA minus VB, this number over here, should be equal to 9 minus, this is 2 volt, so that's 7 volt, right? So we know that's 7 volt. Now we also want to make sure that current is limited, right? So that the current should be, you know, 20 milliamp, all right? So if we want the current to be only 20 milliamp in the circuit, then across the register, we can apply the Ohm's law, which says that VA minus VB should be equal to the current times the resistance. And we want the current to be no more than 20 milliamps, so that's 20 into 10 power minus 3 amp times the resistance. So this is seven, so let's compute this. So R would be equal to, what, uh, it would be equal to seven over two, that's 3.5 into uh, 10 power two, right, 10 power two ohm. So that's basically 350 ohm. So resistance is 350 ohm. So if you pick a register of 350 ohm and connect it in series with this LED, then your LED basically is going to glow and you know it will be safe because the current is limited to 20 milliamp and the voltage drop is only two volt across it. Now, of course, you may not have a 350 ohm register in your in your kit, or you may not be able to locate one. So you can pick something that's close enough to it. In your mechatronics kit, you have a 330 ohm register. So if you pick a 330 ohm register, then clearly you pick something smaller than this. That means current would be slightly more. So instead of 20 milliamp, it might be I don't know 20.1 milliamp, 20.2 milliamp, which is still close enough to the rated uh, capacity. So it would still be all right, okay? So if you pick smaller resistance, if you make it half, let's say to 100, um, I don't know, 100, 175 ohm, then your LED is going to glow, you know, brighter. But of course, you're also limiting its light because now you're allowing a lot more current to pass through the LED.